Hello, and welcome to Light Him on Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. Wow, you're pretty. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we're talking about Deranged Granny. Deranged Granny stars Wendy Malik, Amanda Rietti, Josh Ventura, and Dave Baez. On the show, we either pour it up or put a cork in it. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Pour it up! Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and come on back, because I'm about to do a quick little recap, starting now. Barbara is an overbearing mother-in-law. Her son's wife is having a difficult birth and loses the baby. Barbara holds the dead baby in the waiting room. It is creepy. Flash forward to a divorced Ethan. He doesn't talk to his mother anymore because she keeps a scrapbook with faces scratched out. Ethan meets a woman named Kendall, who is a divorcee, single mother, and an orphan. The TV movie Holy Trinity. They get engaged, and Kendall encourages Ethan to let Barbara back in his life. Barbara is surprised when she sees Kendall's ex-husband Calvin and his mother Lucy at a family barbecue. She puts some nuts in Lucy's brownies and causes Bobby to go into asphyxiation. Barbara helps take care of the kids and has no boundaries. You know, Barbara, I wish you would have called me before you came. How often are they with Calvin? Well, we have joint custody, so they're with their dad about half the time. Oh, that must be kind of a strain for those kids, you know, having to go back and forth all the time. Huh. Calvin and I have had our differences, but he's a great dad. When Ethan and Kendall go on a honeymoon, Barbara expects to be asked to watch the kids. She even designs a playroom and gives the kids iPads to win them over. Barbara is very angry when she learns that Calvin will be watching his kids. She follows him and puts poison in his drink, causing him to get violently ill. He lets Barbara watch the kids. He regrets that decision because Barbara spends even more time with the kids. When it's his weekend and he plans a trip to Boston, she knowingly takes them to an amusement park and doesn't answer her phone. Calvin literally calls her 10 times. He gets angry that she is interfering with his family and yells at her. Business. Who even are you? These aren't your children. They're not your grandchildren. They're not your concern. Just leave us alone. Okay, come on. Why are you being mean to her? Big mistake, Calvin. She bakes him a poison apple pie to prevent him from taking the job in Boston and taking her grandkids away. Kendall starts to become suspicious and talks to Barbara's neighbor, Patty. Patty experienced some of the same things that Kendall has been through and warns her to be careful. When Kendall talks to Ethan, he defends his mother and then moves in with her to give Kendall space. Barbara learns about Patty and gives her a stern talking to. The news of Calvin's death finally reaches Kendall and a funeral happens. The acting here is good? I'm confused. This is a Lifetime movie. What is happening? Things get back to normal when Barbara bakes another poison pie. This time, she plans on feeding it to Kendall. The trouble is, Kendall is pregnant with Barb's grandchild. As Kendall is entering the house, she gets a call from a detective who tells her Calvin died from rat poison. Too bad Barbara already has served a slice for Kendall. When Kendall shares the news about her pregnancy, Barbara throws that pie out lickety split. She doesn't throw all of the pie away and the kids get into it in the middle of the night. Barbara attempts to force them to throw up and Kendall is getting suspicious. She finds rat poison under the sink and calls the police. Barbara pulls a gun on her and explains that she did it all for the grandkids. The grandkids come down and see the commotion. Kendall and Barbara struggle over the gun until Kendall reminds Barbara that she won't see her grandkids anyway because she'll be in jail. Barbara turns the gun on herself but is apprehended by the police before she can do anything crazy. I guess more crazy. Ethan and Kendall have their baby and Barbara is in jail making a sweater for her grandchild. And that is Deranged Granny. You can't go wrong with Wendy Malick ever in a TV movie. She's always 100% in it and ready to go. She's a professional, let's be honest. I love that she committed to playing this Deranged Granny character. No, I'm not a granny. I'm a woman, you know? She's like always playing a mom in Hallmark movies and stuff like that. So it was fun to see her over a lifetime doing something a little bit different. Same outfits though. Still got the turtleneck. And the pearls. Her neck and the pearls. Love that. 
very classy. Also, what was great here was we had a real depiction of co-parenting. That's amazing. And the divorced husband still being in the picture, even though he died, it was nice to have him in the movie. Also, I love that it was a blended family. We had a, a Latinx family, not obvious, but still good. So that made me feel great because, you know, I'm from a biracial family. So seeing a biracial family depicted in a Lifetime movie actually meant a lot. The movie was a slow burn and I was expecting a twist, but it was so well acted that once the twist didn't come, I was still pouring it up for this movie. It's really good. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. Like I said before, there's a blended family, so we did have a good representation here. We had Calvin, played by Dave Baez. Amy, played by Isabel Gameros. Bobby, played by Finnegan Garay. Jane, played by Margarita Franco. You can't forget about Patty, played by Annie Sun, the murder doctor at the beginning, played by Jim Wow, the guard at the end, played by Tamara Perry, Talal Botter, who played a doctor, and Brian, played by Shalyn Agarwal. Great representation here. We had a whole bunch of characters, even in the principal family, that were POC. Also, I love that this movie was directed and written by women. Jennifer Lau directed, and Vicky L. Neal was the writer. So... Props to them. And I think that wraps up this episode. If you want more Lifetime Uncourt, you can follow us at LifetimeUncourt.com. Don't forget to check out our podcast, also called Lifetime Uncourt, wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow me at Patrick Miguel or at the show at Lifetime Uncourt. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this movie or suggest a movie that we should cover in the future. Don't forget to leave a $3 tip on my Kofi so I can buy some Kofi or I can buy some more wine. Yeah, we love wine. Okay, I think that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Bye.